What up, what up, what up, what up? Mic check, mic check, one, two. It's five o'clock in the morning. Early bird gets the worm. The pineal is wide open. We don't go to sleep. Peace, peace. All right, so in today's lesson, we're going to talk about estates versus trust and why I personally think everybody should pay attention to uh, trust instead of estates per se. Now, real quick, let's go over estates. So an estate is a, per a person's estate is all of their property owned by, owned at death. So all the property that a person owns by the time they die, that's all considered an estate. We're gonna make this real simple. It's two, it's two big words we wanna understand when we're talking about estates. One is probate. So let's look up the definition of probate. Probate is the uh, judicial process whereby a will is proved in a court of law and accepted as a valid public document that is the true last testament of the deceased, whereby the estate is settled according to the laws of the attestacy attest, attest in the state of the resident or real property of the deceased at the time of death in the absence of a legal will. All right, so the granting of probate is the first step in the legal process of administrating the estate of the deceased person resolving all claims of this and distributing, distributing the deceased person's property up under, up under a will. A probate court decides the legal validity of the testers or the deceased and, the, uh, and grants its approvals and blah, blah, blah. What, so what, what's this saying is that the pro probate is a process in which the courts administrate over or minister over a person's personal properties uh, and assets. So let's say if, when a person passes away and a, and, uh, and, a, and a guy owned three houses, two cars, had several bank accounts, all adding up to about, let's say, $50,000 all together in savings. So what happens is before, let's say if he had a life insurance policy as well, hopefully, before the beneficiaries of, of his estate of, or his properties or his assets are able to receive the benefits of receiving his remaining assets, monies, and properties, the state goes through a process to determine what the deceased person owed before death or by the time of death. So if, if he... If John Smith owed the state uh, $50,000 in taxes or $100,000 here or $20,000 there, and he owed this company this amount of money because of a lawsuit, and he owed this amount of money for another situation over here. The point of it is, in a nutshell, when, you, when you're talking about estates, it's all, it's all related to side conversations and contracts and um, administration over a person's or the deceased person's assets, personal properties and money. And the state and the government are trying to figure out, that's the state or the government is trying to figure out who that person owed. So meaning that the state and the government would see that, see to it that all outside parties and third parties to that person's estate, properties, monies, and collaterals and all that stuff that the person had at the time of death, all of those things will be divided amongst all parties of interest, meaning everybody that he owed something to. So that means that after all of that is taken care of, all that means after everybody eat off his plate and subtract and divide all of his dividends, 
And then the court would, would issue out the remaining balances to the, uh, the beneficiaries listed on whatever life insurance policy. So uh, the, pro, the uh, probate process typically takes easily a year, two years to, uh, you know, completely process and from beginning to end before they decide what's what, who, who owes what, how much is owed and, and getting that money or assets to the, to the, uh, uh, the, the proper parties. Media trending at work, wish I had time. Listen, all good. It's going to be posted. I can only build a trust. Where where can we start? How can we build a trust and where can we start? Uh, okay, we're going to get into that. But I just want to, I just want everybody to understand the importance of, of trust and getting ourselves familiar with, with establishing trust and establishing our, our last and final wills of testament. So um, we don't want to we don't want to get accustomed to the standard, which is um, allowing the state to the state to administer over an estate, right? We don't want to we don't want to give we don't want to give the state the power to administer over an estate. So now, because it, that's the state and government say so, you know. So just just think if you had, you know, all this, all these, all these monies and, and companies and properties that you want that you would love to be passed, of course, passed on to your loved ones, your family, you know, maybe some friends and stuff like that. The last thing you want you want to do is roll around in your grave and realize that 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 the state. Has taken all of, all of your all of your all of your life earnings, your assets, your properties, your monies, everything, you know, or left left or left your family members with little to nothing to uh, to divide amongst themselves. So th- this is the typical process, meaning that if you don't change anything before the process becomes a process, then this is what happens upon death. This what this what the, where the whole estate, the st- the state world comes from. Now, what do we do to avoid probate? What do we do to 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 avoid litigation? So litigation is another word, and litigation is nothing but the legal process as well. So we look at uh, estate litigation. You see these, it's still, it's still related to the state or the government administ- trying to administer over your personal properties and possessions at the end of the day. You know, probate, litigation, they, these are the two words that they throw at you or throw at your family, you know, upon death. Because, all because they're dealing with a, a dead or deceased piece of property. Basically, this happens once a birth certificate is generated. After a birth certificate is generated, everybody, all the state officials and the governments and the government agencies alike, they all get notified. They all get notified and they say, hey, hey, we got one. One just checked out. You know, let's all, okay, let's see what he owes us. So let's start, let's start checking and see what he owes us. So to go through this process, the last thing that that you want your family members to go through is to have to go through a long duration through court, in and out of court. Family, it's bad enough. A lot of families gonna be going back and forth and feuding with each other anyway over over properties and assets and monies because you know uh, a lack of family unity and structure. But imagine if you had to go through the court. On top of that, so to avoid all of this nonsense, everything has to be about trust. So meaning that we need to start slowly but surely transferring the ownership of our properties into our private trust. 
the reason why we, you want to consider trust as opposed to dying in an estate is because if you think about it, when a person dies, it gen they generate a birth certificate. They can't administer over, it can't be a probate process until there's a death. So that article dies, right? So how do we avoid death? We avoid, we avoid legal death by creating your trust, establishing your final will and testament. Why? Because an, a trust cannot die. That's what they call the living trust. Living trust can only be passed from one, to the, one, one person to the next. Uh, a trust never dies. Only thing that changes is the people that's administrating over the trust, which is only the people that the grantor or the creator appointed to be beneficiaries or trustees over that particular trust. Meaning that everything is governed within the covenant of that particular family, that family trust. And within the declarations of that trust are also additional stipulations and guidelines and protocol to follow suit with upon death of the current trustees and beneficiaries. Because the thing is, people have, people come and they go. But the, the trust has to, ha, has to remain alive. So the life of the trust is limitless, it's, immor it's in, immortal. So we'll constantly keep reappointing people to represent and to administer over these over that particular family trust. So that's in a nutshell the difference between an in the state and the trust, and the reason why we need to consider and really take the uh, establish take establishing trust very seriously, because we don't want to fall victim of an estate. You don't want to fall victim over it in the state. You don't want you don't want to give the state or the government power to to classify you as as a as a dead property or dead state property, right? So they already look at us as state property with the birth certificate. That's why they need that. They need your birth certificate to be so they can administer administer over that is over that over that. Why you're here? So when you when you're dead, of course they're trying to make sure they get they, you know, get their hands full too as well. So we have to uh, we gotta uh, we gotta start taking control of our of our properties. We gotta start protecting our properties, not just for ourselves, but we gotta start we gotta start putting things in the place for the people that we're gonna leave behind because. Life is extremely short, and you don't know how much time you're gonna be here on this planet, on this particular, in this particular dimension. So, you want to make sure you put the proper things in place so that things are in place, you know, and everything will be exactly how it needs to be. You know, the uh, when you establish your trust, you know, you establish a just like leaving a blueprint for your family you know, to walk on. We shouldn't be departing and leaving this place, leaving our, our family, especially our kids at ground zero. They should have some type of elevation, you know, from your transition. You know, they should have some type of head start from your transition. Dorsey was goody, bro. So we got to start putting, we got to start planning for the future. So let's, let's get our heads out of the past. Let's not get stuck in the present and let's start thinking towards the future. We got to we we gotta start wasting time and procrastinating. 
Procrastination ruins the nation. Let's start thinking like that. The second you think it, the second you need to make a move. You might not be able to make the biggest move, but at least if you make some sort of, the smallest move is, is better than no move or no movement at all. So let's, let's, let's practice building our family structures by building our family trust and let's start administering over our family trust while we're here, te teaching, teaching each other, teaching our families how, you know, how to administer over our properties, over our assets, how to start leveraging our properties, leveraging our assets amongst each other to build wealth. There's a lot of things we gotta start getting it, putting in place. Uh, Dorsey say, it's important for your trustees to know how to manage your particular type of trust. Absolutely. Great idea to appoint your children as beneficiaries, whoever you want to pass your legacy to. Exactly. So, so that being said, it's like, it's a thin line between love and hate. You know, it's a thin line between love, trust, and the estate. Meaning that don't just appoint you can't just appoint anybody just because they're family, friends, or even some, some, some kids are not ready for those positions. And I can't just say that they're not ready. Some, so, okay, you're gonna have some kids or some, some kids and some family that's not ready, or most, that's in some, some cases, most, most of our family and kids are, may not be ready. But at the same time, and with the same breath, we got to take the responsibility to, to make sure that we're that we're giving them the proper education and the proper training to be ready to take those positions. We look we look back at all 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 the kings and queens, you know, that's that's that that we're familiar with. You know, they, these people, you know, they, their sons and daughters, they were, were groomed and raised to, to hold the seat and, the, 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 and, and take the crown. He, he, the, the prince was, was, was raised to take the crown of his father and to, to walk in his, like, like it, 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 that, it just is what it was type. It wasn't no, it wasn't no, like, hopefully he turns out right. It, that, that type of stuff didn't didn't happen, you know. It, now, of course, it was. It may have been. They might have had their issues, of course, like all families or whatever. But it wasn't no. I hope he turns out right. I'm just gonna pray for him. Like, see, we we put too much responsibility into things, and onto things that's outside of us, just because we don't want to take responsibility. I'm gonna put it in God's hands. No, this is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to lay the, to lay the, to write later the proper foundation down and to teach them how to walk that path. You know, no matter what what whatever whatever they decide to do outside of that for themselves, but no matter what, they need to be continuing a certain path to secure your family's bloodlines, family legacies, family secrets, family assets, family wealth, family spirituality. So you gotta ask yourself, because if you're not one of the ones that had these things passed down to you, then you're an example of that path not being laid out for you. So now you're gonna ask yourself, are you gonna continue that cycle of destruction, of self-destruction? Are you gonna build a new legacy? Are you gonna take responsibility and put your family on your back? Somebody gotta start it. Somebody got to start it, 
and we gotta raise, we gotta raise kid, these kids to finish it. No questions asked. But yeah, I'm just, uh, Tuning in with y'all for a second. It's a lot going on. And uh, just value life and the people that's around you. That's all I'm going to say. Don't wait for nothing. Don't waste time. Take good advantage of everything in a positive light. Utilize your resources, don't misuse them. Peace.